What's up, Glow of Sunrise? It's your girl, Sarah the Instrumentalist, and this is my submission for Black Girls Love Vinyl. First set of questions is, what's your preferred name? My preferred name is Sarah the Instrumentalist. Well, first of all, my name is Sarah. Uh, my mom named me that after my great-grandmother, so I decided to as a producer, keep my name because I need people to know that I'm a female producer. And when I was researching J. Dilla, I found out a word called instrumentalist. And I really like that, that word. And I thought I would make my own word, take instrumentalist and change it to instrumentalist. So that's me, Sarah the instrumentalist. And I just have a passion for music, instruments, vinyl, anything that just sounds really pretty. So um, that's my name. What's my age? I'm 28 years old. My birthday is March 25th. Shout out to you, Aries. What city and state I'm in? I'm born and raised in Raleigh, North Carolina. I spent my college years in New York City and I travel back and forth between California and I'm hoping to move permanently to California soon. So, holla at me. My occupation. Currently during the day, I fix computers. During all of my spare time, I'm a music producer and a content creator. I'm currently opening a few businesses, so it's gonna be a lot going on. So I like to just say I'm an entrepreneur and someone that likes to follow their passion. What is your social media? My social media is at Sarah2ill on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. What are my top five favorite albums and songs? My favorite album since I was young has been Diana Ross Presents the Jackson 5. The Jackson 5's first album off Motown and features most of the songs that everyone knows but I really really enjoy um, that album. It just it just sounds amazing. It's just pure positivity and makes you feel good. The next record is Jay Dilla's Donuts. It has changed my life ever since discovering Jay Dilla and how he kind of just takes music that people haven't really heard in a long time and kind of just reintroduces it to everyone and into a new way. That's kind of just what I like to do so I really love Jay Dilla's Donut. And of course you know there's a story behind Donuts. Jay Dilla made this album while he was on his deathbed and the album came out and then three days later he passed away but the the album is just amazing it's just amazing beats um just non-stop bangers so it's just one of my favorite albums the next album i really love and i'm and i'm actually having a hard time finding it because it's a french jazz group called cortex and the album is called triple bleu triple bleu a lot of people sample this album and it's just amazing like the samples on there it's just they're just crazy and i i'm gonna put put the picture my next favorite album since I was young has always been TLC's Crazy Sexy Cool. Organized Noise produced most of their album and I just can tell how they put a lot of effort into just making sure the album had instruments and the quality was amazing. It had skits and interludes and, and I was like seven years old listening to this and I was um, amazed at the quality and I still love this album. It's one of my favorite albums, Crazy Sexy Cool, TLC. You know, there's a, it's a lot of albums that I love, but I really do love um, A Tribe Called Quest, The Low End Theory. They have a lot of great albums, but this one is just, it just starts off and ends well. Like the excursion and all the just different songs that they have in this particular album is just right there. And they also sample a lot of jazz music, a lot of uh, funk, uh, R&B, or, you know, soul, and then kind of reinvent it and make it their own. So it's kind of like a combination of listening to a bunch of vinyl, but modern day hip hop so I really love uh, A Tribe Called Quest. The Low End Theory. And I also love any Motown record. It's just they had a run and then the music, the quality, Barry Gordy, everybody that worked for this machine. It's just every album was just pure gold. Like any Motown record I grew up just listening to all of that by myself and just appreciating each and every record. So I can't really put my name on one specific album other than the Jacksons. Um, because that really just set it off for me, but any Motown albums are are pure gold. What are my top favorite five songs? My absolute favorite song is Jamiroquai's Space Cowboy. When I listen to the chords and the way he sings and just the bass, it just makes me feel good about myself. It makes me happy. I just love that song. The next favorite song would have to be that I actually listen to every day because I really kind of want to capture this moment and this sound and kind of just run with it and it's Kanye West's Father Stretch My Hands Part 1. I listen to this song every single day and it's just the way that there's a, a, a gospel soul sample 
There's these aggressive Moog bass lines. There's these melodies in the background with Kid Cudi. And the lyrics are just too much. You know, it's just too much for you. But I love it. I listen to it all the time. And then the fact that the song is really short. Like, that's my method, my format of making beats. I don't like making really long songs. I really like having enough where the user or the, the 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 person that's listening to it wants to listen to it again. You know, it's an addiction. So that's why I end up listening to that song a whole lot. But I really like it. It just it just captures a feeling that I'm trying to go for in my music, and I, that's one of my favorite songs. The next favorite songs are next two favorite songs from Jay Dilla is uh, "Don't Cry" and um, "Light Work." So "Don't Cry," you know, Jay Dilla's "Donuts." If you, the whole album is just a genius, it's, it's crazy because he's, he knows he's passing away. So his, his songs have to do with him passing away, but you don't really, he's not rapping, but the titles, you know, um, the titles and the samples that he choose have something to do with, you know, don't cry if you listen to it. I don't want to see you cry. You know, he's trying to let people know, I don't want you to hurt over my death. That's about to happen. Um, and just the way that he chopped up this sample, it's just he, you know, he just lets the sample roll and then he chops it up and it's just, and speeds it up and it slows it down. It's crazy. Like, that's why I love Don't Cry. And it's just, the whole album just has symbolism. Like, the first song is called Outro, which lets you know that he is about to go. You know what I'm saying? It's, everything is crazy about this album. But Don't Cry is one of my favorite songs from, from Donuts. And then Light Work, the way that he samples like I don't know some broadcasting sample and then like you can hear it phasing from left to right or panning left to right and it's it's it just gives you this feeling this amazing feeling like just if you have never heard these songs please go listen to them they're amazing my ultimate favorite song that makes me feel good it always comes on if I'm like thinking about something that's super important to me it's Luther Vandross never too much I actually think I have it right here I love me some Luther Vandross, like he, this is a good song, like It goes so hard, like this is a good album right here, I love this, this album, it's just, or just the song, like it just makes me feel good Something good always happens when this song comes on, so it's just a really good song, I love these songs, so that's my top five songs But in addition, honestly any Jackson 5 song is my favorite song I'm obsessed with Jackson 5. I have this giant Michael Jackson poster right here. I know a lot of people have seen it in my videos. I've always been obsessed with the Jackson 5 Motown. So the next question is what made you get into collecting records? I've always had a thing for records when I was younger. Me and my family would travel to my great aunt's and my grandma's house kind of like three hours out in the country in North Carolina. And they had this house that had like a den and the den had like this dance floor and a vinyl record player like a jukebox and a bunch of vinyl and this was kind of like my favorite time of the year is Christmas and Thanksgiving I would come visit them and we will always listen to these records and I was always just attracted to the way they they sound the music the the way they look the artwork I've just always had to thank for them so as time went on my relatives you know they passed away they um arrangements from christmas changed but i've always kind of just had a, a thing for the records in my family so i first started off with my grandma i asked my grandma for her record she didn't have a whole lot but she had a box full of records that my grandfather owned and she gave them to me so that's where it first started this kind of happened maybe three years ago so she gave me her box of of vinyl and it was just like a, a really small collection just to start off the collection that i saw at my great aunt's house i'm very interested in getting so i asked my great aunts for her collection for a long time and she was not having it she was not trying to give me any of her records and i kept bugging her for her records so eventually i got a knock on my door and it was my grandma and my great aunt aunt hilda and she had a bunch of records for me and she gave me a whole lot of them so I have some boxes that she brought over. To be honest, I know they're not the records that were the original ones from when I was younger at my great aunt's basement. What I think is actually my Uncle Ray's, Uncle Junior's or Uncle, Uncle Junior. It's his records and so I still want my entire family's collection because for me, it just brings back a lot of great memories, nostalgia, and the music from this particular time period is just amazing. I guess it's mainly music from the 70s and the 80s, 
um, or the 60s or the 50s, I got some, some classic. I did learn about Jay Dilla later than most people. You know, as I was getting into beat making, I learned about Jay Dilla through K Trinata because that's his favorite producer. And I was like, who is this guy, Jay Dilla? And then I would just find out all this amazing information about him and how he was so disciplined about listening to different records and crate digging. He would go around the world and just be so into it and that's where it kind of got me into a, a fascination with learning about more records and going into a record store finding a record based off what it looks like and not knowing what it sounds like kind of it's just one of the best things that I can go through because I don't know what it sounds like it could be trash it could be amazing um, and that's a, the thrill of crate digging and being a producer and trying to find loops and samples for your music I just love it. It's just a, it's a great thing to do from, for me. It's just fun. And then it's also, I think it's just better to have and hold an actual tangible record, like an actual cover. Like, you see his personality on this cover and it, the artwork and everybody, you know, has a unique story to tell with their music. So it's really nice to actually hold a record and see the, the actual vinyl and put it on a player versus going to your phone where you have a collection of music there. No one really wants to go through a collection of of, sound, of songs on your on your phone. People would rather go through a collection of your records. So, you know, just to grab this James Brown record, it's like, wow, you know, this was, you know, pressed in the 70s and this is an original copy. So just to feel like something that will never happen again, like this record is not going to be, there's only a few of them, period. So as time goes by, vinyl is super valuable to me because in 100 years from now this record it there's only going to be a few and it's going to be only a few that actually work you know what i'm saying that actually play well so that's why i keep them up tight i love them it's just my passion right now and then on top of that it is vinyl is the the core of my music i've learned that most of my production comes from samples and I need to listen to different vinyl, different sounds, different eras, different times, different music just to see what works for me so I can make something new out of it. So vinyl is just the core of what I do right now and I can't, I don't know where I would be if I didn't have vinyl. So the next question is how does music make you feel? Music makes me feel happy. So music allows me to lose track of time, it allows me to escape reality, allows me to just become myself and figure out things about myself that I didn't know and just overall just makes me feel happy. How important is music to you in your daily living? Honestly, I, I think about this all the time. I don't know how I could live without music. I start my day with listening to music, whether it's listening to music on my phone or actually listening to records and then using those records to make my own music and kind of influence other people to create. Um, it's just a cycle of, of love and I, I need it. I need music to just feel good and escape. So when I listen to, if I'm in a bad mood or, you know, if my mind is wandering in a negative place, just putting on a nice song or a beat really does help me out. It just helps me just kind of just move forward. And I don't know where I could be without music because, you know, I'm the only child to my mom. And if I didn't have music, I really don't know what I'd be doing because that's what kept me occupied. Music's my best friend. I remember when I was younger, I would just sneak off and listen to music in the middle of the night because that's what made me happy. And <laughs> um, just to think about it now, it's just, it's full circle. It's just, it's just my best friend. Like music, it's just unique. There's something about vibrations and, and sound that just make people come together, people love. And... Some people can use it for the bad, but I try to listen to positive music, positive sounds, and the positive vibration, so it just makes me happy. What are my favorite music genres? Honestly, most of everything, but to be specific, I love boom bat, instrumentals, lo-fi, underground hip-hop, soul, funk, R&B, pop, dance, house, disco, rock. I'm not a big fan of country music or like heavy metal, but you know, I'm pretty down with anything that sounds really pretty and just gives you a good feeling, makes you want to move. What are your favorite record shops? So my favorite record shop honestly is anything that sells records, but specifically I love going to Record Crate downtown Raleigh. That's where Knife Wonder did his Rhythm and Roulette and I also did one with my mom down there. I also really love going down to the North Carolina State Fairgrounds. We have a flea market every weekend and there's these these two guys that sell a lot of records for three dollars each and they're amazing like they're they should be worth a lot more but 
this is the that's the best deal to get records. That's the best place I can get records from. I was super overwhelmed when I went to Aniva Music in San Francisco. I really want to spend a lot of time in there. I haven't been out to the one in LA yet, but I definitely want to visit as many record stores and little dungeons that have records all around the world as much as possible. It's my goal to go on tour to to do you know music collection and also a fun fact for me i really want to be able to purchase my own record store but not like an actual record store and sell records i want to actually purchase a library full of records for myself you know how like beauty and the beast she had her own library of books and she walked in and was like oh a lot of books i want that for records i want to i want to have walls and walls and like a library of records for myself i don't want to sell it just like this this is the beginning of this collection i just have these here and then here um and then some over here but that's that's it for now but i'm hoping to have like a house or a warehouse full of records for myself so i could really listen and dig and i want to travel the world collect but i want to be able to be able to go into a store one day and be like hey can i take your whole soul section can i take your whole funk section and just take it and then just collect that's what i want to do that's my goal same thing for instruments and gear i really love instruments i'm starting to collect a lot of instruments right now there's no stopping me i want to have a whole room and studio full of instruments and gear so i can always keep myself occupied and happy and make and create music so it's just my passion to just collect a lot of stuff um not to be a hoarder but to be a really a genuine music collector and organize it very well so speaking of organization my records right now um i have them organized from a to z from over here these this set of records are the the newest records that i purchased and are going to be part of like my beat tape so i have them in a specific way um i will be organizing my records from from decades and then from a to z so i'm going to hopefully reorganize everything to have everything from the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, and 90s, and then have them organized from A to Z in those decades. So I can have them sectioned off like that. Two more things. Um, I really like finding international records, a lot of foreign records that you can't find in America. Um, I really want to be able to go to Brazil or um, Japan or Colombia or anywhere that has these amazing collections of records and different sounds that you can't really find in America. I really love when I find or go into the international section and I find a record that I've never seen before. This. So this was a really cool record I found at Aniba Music. It's a Japanese record and I love it because it's, you can even tell it's Japanese, it's a small record and you don't really find these in America. I can't even tell who the artist is or what it says or anything and the, the, the samples are really good on here so I really enjoy finding these little gems so and then another cool fact about myself is I have to leave a record store within 30 minutes because if I spend more time in a record store if I don't have the money I'm gonna spend all my money so it's the struggle so yeah I'm trying to um, be able to have that ability to spend more time in a record store so I could spend more money on records but it's an addiction so yeah um, there's tons of records in this world and if I can get my hands on all of them I could <laughs> but I know that I can't so I have to force myself to leave a record store so I cannot spend a lot of money in there Shout outs to Black Girls Love Vinyl. Shout outs to Glow of Sunrise. Thank you for this opportunity. Peace.